As we explore industries, capital intensity is something that we'll analyze as related to industry status. And we'll do that by understanding the impact on the venture and the impact of success of the entrepreneur. When we think about industry structure, it lines up besides life cycle within the broader element of status. And by understanding the elements of status and life cycle, we'll have a better handle on how to compete within that industry. So the element of capital intensity fits within the element of industry structure, which is within this element of industry status. So to define industry structure, what we're referring to is the nature of barriers to entry and the competitive dynamics within the industry. There are four that we'll analyze. Today, we'll talk about capital intensity, and then later we'll discuss advertising intensity, company concentration, and average company size. When we look at the first of those four elements, capital intensity, we're interested in money. We're interested in the amount of money required to enter and compete within an industry. Industries that have a high capital intensity are things like automotive manufacturing. Industries that have a low capital intensity would be something like a website that you start to provide movie reviews, where for perhaps $10, you could launch a website driven by a website builder that if you can use Microsoft Word, you can build a site using one of these website builders. You can watch movies. You can post your reviews of those movies. So very easy to start, very inexpensive to start, very low capital intensity in that case. One great way to analyze industries is through IBIS World. So we're going to take a look and use this platform to look at an industry that I see a lot of interest in among students typically, and that's online tutoring. So IBIS World gives you the opportunity to find quite good reports, which will look at industries from a variety of facets. So you can see here the 30 different elements that are typically included within any IBIS report. What we're going to look at within the executive summary are clues that give us some insight into capital intensity. There are several. In the beginning, we see that there's strong growth due to rising internet penetration that's favoring online services, that there's a large number of individuals returning to educational institutions, and that there is growth. And there's growth in the industry of 7.9% in the coming years. We also see that there's growth in competition, which is what industry enterprises are, and that that's anticipated to increase annually at 5.8% to 208 enterprises, or if we're going to enter that space, 208 competitors. That there's record strong growth, though at a decelerated rate, so it's still a growing market, but it's not growing as fast as it once was and that there are new things that are coming to bear by way of smartphones and tablets that are providing new ways for innovative companies to participate. So in that measure, we began to get some intuition via the research of others on where we could compete, and maybe something that's smartphone or tablet specific is where we would like to spend our energies. What we also learned through these IBIS reports are lots of data and lots of valuable data we find that online tutoring services in 2014, revenues, 146.9 million, annual growth over the prior five years, 7.9%, annual growth over the coming five years, 6.6%. Profit for the industry, collectively, 12.3 million. Wages for the entire industry, 63 million. Businesses, our competitors, 208. I can do some of my own math, and I can take a look at that profit, divide that by the businesses, and calculate that the average profit per business is $60,000. I can also do the same for revenues or wages or any of these other measures as well. So recognize that there is a variety of data that's set forth, but naturally you can do your own analysis to learn more things from that data set. I also learn who are the leaders in the space. 
in terms of market share. And I see that Tudor.com owns 15.9% of the market, meaning that if I multiply that 15.9% by the 146.9 million, that lets me know what their revenues were for the year. I can do the same math with Pearson, PLC, and for this segment of Pearson that's focused on online tutoring, I can learn what their revenues are in this space. I can also take a look at the product and service segmentation and see that 56% of the revenues generated were generated from the exam preparation services, that 28% were focused on other tutoring programs, probably one-to-one -one tutoring will be my guess, and 15.7% is aligned in more occupational areas. So I've learned a lot, and I've learned a lot in just one page. I can go further and look at, at least in the opinion of the IBIS analyst, what's the industry look like? They believe it's in a growth phase. They believe the revenue volatility is medium and that the capital intensity is low. They also share a variety of other factors here as well that interest me, including that their assessment of the competition is, is that it's very high, which is often the case when you are dealing with low capital intensity businesses. Easy for you to enter is easy for others. Cheap for you to enter is cheap for others. So we want to keep that in mind as well. I want to dig again a bit deeper. And so I can look at the percentage growth in the establishments and I can see that's around 5%. And that the quality of growth is still strong. So the revenue is growing faster than the economy. There's still a lot of companies in the space, there's rapid technology and process change, there's growing customer acceptance of the product via these mechanisms with the online tutoring, and that there's rapid introduction of new products and new brands. All good signs for me as an entrepreneur that we are indeed in that growth phase. When I look at the capital intensity, I want to recognize, well, where is the money being spent? And I see here that it is predominantly spent in labor, but it's done at a fairly low cost. Now, the other half of online tutoring beyond the tutors is naturally the technology piece. But in the report that I read here, it tells me that that is majority bought and not built. And that's an important differentiation for startups. Bought means that you are essentially paying for a service. You're paying for, in this case, perhaps an Adobe Connect or a WebEx or other tools that allow you to do some measure of online tutoring that may integrate screen sharing, that may integrate video conference capability, it may integrate other areas whereby the tutors and the students can have quality interaction and can in some way replicate that face-to-face -face experience and perhaps even make that a better experience online than it is face-to-face but what I read here is that, in large part, these companies are not building their own platforms, that they're able to leverage other things that are already out there, either in whole or in part, and then integrating them into their space. Now, that's not necessarily true of all companies. A tutor.com perhaps has built their own solution, or perhaps they've done what many companies do, which in the beginning, use some off-the-shelf or available solutions to serve their needs. And then as they realize some success and realize some profit, they can afford to have a custom solution be built for them. But what I recognize here is that we are broadly, on average, across the 208 companies at a relative low level of capital intensity. What that means for me is that, again, is more labor intensive than it is capital intensive. But even for that labor, my expense for them may not be very high. There's a measure of expertise that they need, but it may not necessarily be a PhD level of expertise. It may not necessarily be $100,000 a year employees. It may be a bit more accessible and a bit more affordable to bring the labor to bear if I wanted to enter the online tutoring space. A different area to consider is brought by looking at other reports and research that's out there. Every year, Entrepreneur Magazine will rank the top 10 low-cost 
franchises for the year. Low costs for them can be a few thousand dollars. So for $2,000 or $3,000 or $4,000, you can be a franchise owner. And the franchises vary. There are a lot of cleaning services. There are a lot of tax preparation services. There are a lot of exercise services. There are a number of travel planning services. This is the type of thing that you typically see when you're looking at a very low cost franchise. So to look at one of these, that's a perennial favorite among the list, we'll look at JanPro, which is a commercial cleaning service. It's a large service with over 11,000 locations in the U.S. and abroad. It's an old service in that it's been around for almost 25 years. And it started as many franchises do with an entrepreneur with a concept that launches a company and has some success with that and then is able to sell that model and that brand to others that want to implement that as well. The cost of doing that is a franchise fee and a royalty, a percentage of revenues. But what we see here is a very low cost of entry, $1,000 of liquid cash, a net worth of $1,000 to $14,000, and a total investment starting at $3,100, with the availability to even finance a lot of the equipment. So if you need a van, if you need equipment, which you likely would as a new entrant in this space, Janapro will also work with you to manage some of that financing. So you don't need all of that money up front. You can pay it off over time, off of the revenues you generate by operating that business. Very low capital intensity. My expectation is that the profits are probably fairly low as well. So how can aspiring entrepreneurs particularly entrepreneurs that might be thinking along a high growth or a more innovative or a more profitable path, participate in commercial cleaning. Well, you could start a commercial cleaning company, but it may not necessarily be the lifestyle or the profit that you may envision. You could do a few other things. You could start a technology company that may develop an online training platform to support new commercial cleaners. So if you see an opportunity in that space, and you're looking for another low capital way of participating, maybe for the JanPro and other commercial services companies that are starting, you can provide some supplementary training for them, or maybe for the entrepreneurs that want to be commercial cleaners but may not want to share 10% of their revenues with JanPro forever and may not want to pay for their franchise fee with the JanPro, they could use your online training platform to develop the skills and the know-how to go out and be successful in that venture. Alternatively, you could develop an online platform to support the marketing and business operations of these commercial cleaners. So perhaps it's training of how to physically do the work. Perhaps it's a platform for how to market and operate the business successfully. Maybe it's a platform that can do both. Or maybe it's something else. But there are a variety of tools and techniques to really think about where opportunities are. And as entrepreneurs, to the extent that there are low capital opportunities, that may be an added advantage for us as well, if we don't have the capital or don't have the access to capital, to do things that are going to be much more expensive. So in summary, when we look at industry structure, we want to think about the role that that plays within the industries that we're considering enter, and how best to compete within that. We also want to recognize that low capital intensity presents a more affordable opportunity for new entrants to enter and compete effectively. The caution is that it also is a low barrier of entry for others, both now and in the future. So that can be played in one of two ways. One, there can be a race to outpace and out-innovate others in the space if you are an early entrant to make it more expensive to compete later. The other is that you can erect some barriers either with your brand, with your distribution, with exclusivity agreements, are there other strategic things you can do to make it more expensive for competitors to come later? So there are a variety of things that we'll be talking about later, but the key element here is to recognize the role of capital intensity and the influence that it has on your industry structure.